See my streak? Thumbs up? Yeah, we can see it. Yeah, cool. Okay. <laughs> I do that now. I'm, 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 I'm always subconscious about that because one time I was going through a whole, like, four or five different slides. And people were like, uh, what are you talking about? Like, can you see the slide? They're like, no. I was like, oh, my God. I felt so simple. So now I'm all subconscious. Can you see it? Okay. So this is called time versus time and times of refreshing. Acts chapter 3 verse 9, 19 says these words. Re no, let me just set the stage. This is what Peter is talking to the common folk, the Jewish folk who were in Jerusalem at that time, and he's literally rebuking them. He's like pointing out to these guys, look, y'all, you killed Jesus, and he was the one who was the one that saves us all. That's, that's pretty much the premise of his speech. But this is his, his, um, his appeal, um, appeal to them to, there's still time to make it right. There's still time to accept them. Okay? Here's what he says, verse 19. Repent ye therefore and be converted, that your sins may be blotted out when the times of refreshing, say refreshing, shall come from the presence of the Lord, and he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution, say restitution, of all things which God has spoken by the mouth of all of, all of his holy prophets since the world began. So Peter is setting the stage that, you know what? Yeah, he came here, he told you who he was, he proved who he was, and then you guys killed him. But oh well, but here we are now, here we are now. So therefore, repent and be converted that all of your sins will be forgiven. So that when the times of refreshing come to the Lord, you're going to receive those blessings. But Jesus, he's not coming back until the times of restitution of all things which God spoken about the Holy Prophets. She's letting these guys know the time is now to receive Jesus as Lord and Savior so that you can be, uh, so you can be uh, reborn and redeemed and then the blessings will come to you. But Jesus is not coming back until all things are being fulfilled. That's, that's right there. It's, it's not, he's not give, really giving a deadline, but he's letting you, letting you know there, while there's time, there's still time. That makes sense. While there's still time, there's still time. A few things. There are times of refreshing from the Lord. And there are times of restitution of all things. Times mentioned for the, well, the first one, times of refreshing. That Greek word, that word in the Greek, I'm sorry, from coordinates 2540 is kairos. It means set or proper time. I call it God's divine time. Okay? A set or proper time. God's divine time. Now, time is mentioned here for restitution is the Greek word strong according to G5550 is chronos, which means a space of time. For example, days, years, months, hours, minutes, and seconds. A time frame. So, the refreshing I'm um, sorry, Kairos is a set time, 3 o'clock on Monday. That's a Kairos moment. A Kronos moment is sometime in the future. So Kairos puts it more of a precision, accurate day and time, an hour, minute, and second. While the second time, Kronos is basically a time duration, a span of time. So God has set specific times for your blessings. But Jesus has to remain in heaven until everything is restored. So in other words, he is not coming back until the restoration of all things are restored back on earth. On a side note, that word refreshing in the Greek, it means the recovery of breath. I repeat that. that. Times are refreshing. The refreshing in the Greek means recovery of breath. It's that. Uh, 
So not only is it time to breathe, relax, rebuild, and the time to just sit down and get revived. That's what that means. Restitution means to reconstitute and like uh, what's um, uh, Pamela, when she was getting her mom's quilts, she was going to um, put them through a plastic bag and suck out all the air and to where it becomes like, you know, like a little scrunch double thing. And then it's like, not like it's original shape, but then when you release that seal and the air comes back into it, it gets restored to its original consistency. You know, we, we bought one of those mattresses that came in a box and I thought, there is no way this rolled up thing can bounce back to its normal shape. But boy, howdy, man. I took that sucker. It was heavy, too. And I threw it on the bed frame, and I opened up the box. And I pulled the box away, and I just sat there and watched this thing reconstitute itself. I was like, it was like magic. I was like, thing was just, I thought, how could this be? How in the world could this be? Basically, what they do is suck on all the air, and then they roll it up tightly in like a vacuum seal. And they punch it back in there. So then when you break that seal and the air comes back into it, it is back to its original shape. So Jesus isn't coming back until that mattress is completely reconstituted to its original shape. Jesus isn't coming back until all the, those fruits that have been dehydrated, when you rehydrate them, they go back to their original consistency. He, like, basically, he's not coming back into the restoration of all these things. Now, that's when Jesus comes back. So he is not coming back until the chronos, the minutes, days, hours, minutes, seconds, is fulfilled before he comes back, of all things. So there is time for God to bring restoration through chronos. But the blessings of God, those are kairos moments, which means if God is supposed to bless you on November 15th, 2023, but you haven't repented or made it right, there's a chance you, may, you might not get that blessing. Because uh, as Peter was saying, repent therefore, so that when times of refreshing are released for the presence of the Lord, you'll be there at the right place at the right time. Are you with me? It is one of those, one of, one of those encouraging words that says, if you are there at the right, right time and right place, repenting of your sins, then you are entitled to the blessing that is supposed to be released from the Kairos moment of God. Say, yeah, but when does Jesus come back? Chronos. When the fulfillment of all those things are taking place, boom, it's going to happen. So the longer that takes, the longer you got to wait. But the Kairos moments, those divine times, are a set time and date and place. It is in those moments that God has ordained as divine times of the Lord. And so Peter was saying, repent, please repent, so your sins may be forgiven, so that when times are refreshing, so you can take your deep breath, you can get that blessing will be there at the right place at the right time. <clears throat> so it could be the times that we miss those opportunities of blessing is because we haven't been right with God. Don't get me wrong, there's still God's grace. We're going to talk about some more deeper thing. Maybe we've missed some opportunities. Maybe we have missed some blessings. Can we get those things back? Keep that in mind. Can we get those blessings back? Someone say, you missed it, buddy. Too late now. Game over. Acts chapter 1, verse 6. When they, therefore, were come together, they asked of him, saying, Lord, wilt thou at this, the word is time, but a put chronos, which means days, hours, minutes, and seconds, will I, this chronos restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, it is not for you to know the chronos time or the season. By the way, that word time and seasons, both words are still chronos. Look at this. Which the Father has put in his own power. It is not for you to know the chronos or the seasons, which the Father has put in his own power. Which means, simply put, God is going to restore Israel, but it's not going to be July 14th, 2024. There's not a date and time for that. It's when God sees, okay, this is the fulfillment of all the things already. Let me just, let me just back it up a little bit more too. You know, the Bible says, um, 
I go and prepare a place for you. When Jesus says, when I want to go back, I'm going to bring you with me, so therefore you can be with me. That is part of the marriage proposal in Jerusalem, Israeli Hebrew marriage proposal. What they do is, when the guy proposes to a woman and says, will you marry me? She says, yes. He goes, oh, okay, great. Same one is going to be this weekend. Okay, so I'll tell you what. I'm going to go prepare a place for us. I'm going to build a house for us. And when it's ready, when it's done, I'm going to come back and come get you and then bring you back with me to the house we just built. So you don't know when it's going to be as long as it takes him to build that house. Now, here's the cool part. Ready for this? This is the really cool part. When that guy is building his house, he first must ask his father, what do you think, Dad? And his dad comes in there, knocks on a wall or two, tries the water, flicks on a few light switches, and says, ah, paint this better, make this bigger. Or, or, or add another shelf here because she's going to need some shelf space for all of her shoes. Okay, yeah, ready? Okay, how about, what about now, Dad? Okay. Go and get your bride. It is up to the father to say when the house is ready. Then the son will go down and get his bride and bring her back to the house. This is why the Bible says, no one knows what the end they are but my Father in heaven, because he is the one that's going to, come on somebody, Jesus. He is the only one that's going to say, it is time. So the Bible, the, the scripture is saying, nobody knows the day or the hour of the season, but my Father, which is put in his own power, because he is the one that will be able to tell his son, okay, go and get your bride, buddy. Go and get your bride. So, please don't look at it as if to say, time is running out. Because Jesus will wait for you to repent to make it right. He will wait for you. As long as it takes, the Bible says he's long-suffering, which means that he's got a long nose, which means that in Hebrew it's a long nose, but in, in, in our vernacular it means he, he'll wait just as long as he needs to wait. That's grace. That is grace. Like, All right, take your time. I got you. I got you. All right, no, no, take your time. Take your time. So, I mean, talk about God's grace. He will wait for you to do all the shenanigans you're doing. And then when you're ready to repent, he goes, okay, cool, cool. Now, now, times are refreshing. I'm coming to you now. Thank you, Jesus. You can stop right there and say, thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. So when he says, times of refreshing and times of restitution of all things, and these things are, are really up to the Father, he's basically waiting for you. Yeah, so God has set times. They are minutes and seconds for your blessings. So Jesus has to remain in heaven until everything is restored. So he can't come back until the Father says, okay, it's time. Acts 1 verse 6 says, okay, I, I, I put this together. I'm sorry, I made this another slide. Okay, but look at verse 8. But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost has come upon you and you shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria, say Samaria, and to the other parts of the world. Now, we talked about Samaria in the past, what, what that really means. So, going back to the time factor, we're, we're going to revisit that slide in a second. So, the Kairos is divine time, the place where opportunity and destiny meet. Opportunity and destiny meet. So, if you've got a destiny, but there's no opportunity, then something's wrong. So if you got the opportunity, but you don't see the destiny, something is wrong. It is where opportunity and destiny meet together. That is a Kairos moment, the divine time of God. If you recall, the Bible says that Jesus says, uh, right before the, um, the, the bar, uh, when he marched into, to, uh, I think it was Bethany, uh, riding on a donkey, he first says, Go to this place. You're going to find a donkey tied up. Go ask the master. My uh, go tell the person who was on the donkey. My, my master has needed this donkey. And you're going to find him right there. And the Bible says, and they found the donkey. Exactly what he said. Exactly he was going to be there. Because that's a Kairos moment. That's a Kairos moment. Jesus said, before the rooster crows, crows three times, you're going to deny me. That was a Kairos moment. In three days' time, you're going to rise up again. That was a Kairos moment. These are Kairos set times. There is no sliding scale of that. But there are sliding scales in regard to God's grace and mercy. Thank you, Lord. But the times of blessing and significant times, like those Kairi, Kairi, Kairos moments, are divine set proper times of God. I want to beat this down to a bloody pulp, so I want you guys to get this. So the Kairos divine time 
as where opportunity and destiny meet. Chronos is the enemy or the opposite of that. That's where we get the word chronological from. That's the hours, minutes, and seconds. So in Greek mythology, Chronos um, and pre-Socratic or Socrates philosophical works is said to be the personification of time. His name actually means time and is alternately spelled K-H, Chronos, just transliteration of the Greek, or the Chronos, which is the Latin version. So the Chronos is the Latin version. The K-H is the Greek version. Not to be confused with Chronos, the Titan. Two different things. And Chronos, Chronos was imagined as an incorporeal god. Serpentine in form. Basically means you can see him. Serpentine in form. So look like a snake with three heads. That of a man, a bull, and a lion. Isn't that interesting? We all understand and know that the cherubs in heaven have four faces. Lion, eagle, man, bull. So Kronos has three faces. Isn't it interesting? Close, but no cigar. He and his consort, Serpentine Anaki, which means inevitably, inevitably, uh, inevitability, circled their primal world egg in their coils and split it apart the final universe of Earth, Sea, and Sky. So they're basically trying to say what these two, Anaki and Kronos, what they do is these two snakes wrapped around the universe, uh, wrap, 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 I'm sorry, wrapped around the quote unquote universal egg, and they both wrapped around it and then. Went, phew, and that's what created the Big Bang Theory and made us all, you know, the universe as we know it today. That's the Greek conspiracy theory on how the world, the universe began. But it's so interesting how they're trying to um, put this all together to make it one convincing theory about how we began by saying chronos and time inevitability. In other words, it's bound to happen. It was bound to happen. That's what they're trying to say. Those two things, bound to happen. No, it's not bound to happen. But that's the, that's the premise that the Greek mentality tries to portray. Also known as Father Time. He was depicted in Greco-Roman mosaics as a man turning the zodiac wheel. Often the figure is named Eon, which means eternal time, a common alternate name for the God. So every time you see Eon, it's another name for Cronus. Cronus was usually portrayed through an old wise man with a long gray beard known as Father Time. So every time we see Father Time, and I hate this, people will portray God as Father Time. They'll see God as this old white guy with a long beard uh, with a clock or a staff in his hand, whatever that may be. And all it is, is not God, as we know, Yehavah, uh, Adonai. It's Father Time, the Greek God Kronos, which is a serpent in nature. Help us, Jesus. Can you see how we can get so twisted and so lost from what's myth and what's real? So every time I see God as our Father God portrayed as Father Time, I get mad because I know it's the Greek mentality uh, the Greek um, um, mindset that's trying to portray our Heavenly Father as Father Time. Not even the sword. Now let's talk about his wife, Anaki, for a little bit. She was a personification of destiny, necessity, and fate, depicted as holding a spindle. You know, things you to make pull cotton from? She marks the beginning of the cosmos along with Cronus. She was seen as the most powerful dictator of all the fates and circumstance, which meant that the other gods had to give her respect and pay homage to her, as well as the immortals. She was also the mother of the Moray, the three fates who were fathered by Zeus. Basically, this chick and Zeus had, they got together and had three kids. Or, well, more than three, but with this chick, she had three. 
She was worshiping the creation of the Orphic uh, mystery of religion. So in Roman mythology, she is known as, ready for this? Necessitas. That's her name, Necessitas in Latin. Uh, well, in Roman mythology, we get the word necessity from. She and Cronus are thought to mark the, mark the division between eons of chaos and the beginning of the cosmos. In other words, when the whole universe was whack, all crazy, all, all like without logic, but dysfunctional, these two supposedly brought control to the universe. Like it was necessary for her to do what she did. That's the, the premise. So we owe her a lot of gratitude for bringing, bringing order to what was known as chaos in the universe. By the way, isn't it weird that her name could also mean anarchy? Disorder and chaos is interesting. So we look at chaos versus cosmos. They are the opposite of each other. Chaos means complete disorder, confusion, dysfunctional, out or without order. Cosmos is a well-ordered universe. Let's look at our three daughters. I'm, I'm, I'm going to give you the Greek, but I'm going to tell you why this is so significant. When we look at the three daughters that her and Zeus had, the Marae, they're called the Fates. The first child was called Clotho. That's where we get the word clothes from, by the way. So, in English, it's pronounced spinner. Or the person who takes the, the spindle that you pull cotton thread from, <coughs> you, spun, you spin uh, thread from cotton. So her name means Clotho, where we get the word clothes. She spins the thread of life from her distaff and upon the spindle. Basically, she puts the cotton on the spindle thingy and begins to turn the spindle and pulling out the, the, the silk or the thread from it. Her Roman equivalent name was Nona, or in English, Nine, the Ninth, who was originally a goddess caught upon in the ninth month of pregnancy. So basically, we're going to set the stage real fast. So when a person is born, Clotho or Nona, she's the one that begins to pull the spindle out, and she's the one who pulls out like life beginning. That's her, that's, I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop, I'm um, continue this. She's the first one who pulls out the thread of life of a person, okay? So it makes sense in a second. I'm just giving you a little Greek history real fast. Her sister was pronounced Lachesis, or a lotter. She had the task of measuring the thread of life that was spun on the spindle by her sister, Clotho Hell. As a result, she was responsible for deciding how much life each person on Earth had. After measuring the thread, she was also the decider of a person's destiny. Her Roman equivalent, ready for this? Her name was Decima, or the tenth. So her sister, Clotho, Clotho was the ninth. She's the tenth. So Clotho, Clotho was the one or Nona in Roman, Roman uh, 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 translation, was the one who pulls out the thread. The, the second girl, Decima, was when we get the word decimal, she's the one who measures out the thread. So this first one pulls it out. Second girl measures. So you can probably tell what the, the last girl did, the last sister did. So the first one pulls it out, you're being born. Second one measures out your life. Okay? You, you, you can probably tell where I'm going with this. Third sister, Atropos, where we get the word Atropi from. That word means inevitable. Also times, sometimes she's called Aisa. She was the cutter of the thread. She chose the manner of a person's death when she cut the thread with her jacked up shears. Her Roman name was Morta, where we get the word mortality or death. So all three sisters, Clothes or Clotho, Nona, nine, pulls out the thread, you're born. Decima measures the thread, and then Morta cuts the thread. And they would basically hand out pieces of thread, some were short, some were long. And supposedly, when you were born, the three sisters came into the room and said, okay, you're born, and this is how long you're going to live. Cut, 
and they would tie this string around the kid's arm or the hands, basically stating, this is how long you're going to live. Enjoy your life, buddy. So if you get a short string, you knew your life was ended. It was not gonna, you're not going to have a long life. If you get a long piece of thread, you're going to live a long life. So you can probably tell those who had long pieces of string were really, really grateful for these three sisters. Those who had short strings probably cursed them until the day they died. But the premise of it is, all three sisters measured your life, or were there at the beginning of your life, measured your life, and decided when you're going to die. Pato or Nona Decima and Morta. Three sisters. Three fates. Here's how you to defeat the ugly fates, the ungodly fates. Ephesians 5.11. And this is one reason why the disciples, because this Greek mentality was, was, was polluting everyone in Israel. Uh, Ephesians 5, 11, I have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame to even speak of those things which are done to them in secret. But all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. Wherefore you say it, awake thou that sleepeth, and arise from the dead, and Christ will give thee light. See then that you walk circumspectly, not as fools, but as wise. Look at this. Redeeming the time, those, those Kairos moments, because the days are evil. Wherefore, be ye not unwise, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. And the next, the, the next, that's the Ephesians five, Colossians four and five. Four, I'm sorry, Colossians four and five says, "Walk in wisdom toward them that are without, redeeming the time, the Kairos moments." So, what is this telling us in Ephesians and, and uh, Colossians that we have missed our opportunities to set divine times of reflection and blessing, but we get to redeem them, get them back. We get to get those times we miss. I want you to be encouraged today. You may have felt that like you've lost your blessing. You've missed your opportunity. You're not going to have those, those, those that, that place, that house, that job, that, that ministry, that business, that family. Yes, you will. Yes, you will. The Bible says you get to redeem those Kairos moments. You get to redeem those Kairos moments. So no, you have not missed it. No, you have not blown it. You can get those times back. Can we change the past? No. But you get to get those times back. Get to get those times back. I think what is it, chess or checkers? That if you get to take your pawn, if you were to uh, get your pawn at the end of the board, you get to get another a piece, a piece of of your um, what do you call it? Um, what do you call those pieces? Um, entourage. If you lost your queen. And you get your pawn, you get to get your queen back. That's redemption. You get to get those things back. You thought you lost it, but you get to get those things back. How do you redeem God's divine time? This is really interesting. I'm giving you kingdom secrets here. Psalms 139 verse 16 says, You saw who I who I'm sorry, you saw who you created me to be before I became me. Now let's read that again. You saw who you created me to be before I became me. Before I did I ever seen the light of day. The number of days you planned for me were already recorded in your book. So those three fates. Are trying to tell you this is how you're going to live, this is when you're going to be born, and this is how you're going to die. But the Bible says you knew every day of my life before I even lived one of them, and they've already been recorded in your book. So we get to use that against the enemy who's trying to tell you this is how you're going to die. No, that's not how I'm going to die. Now, true, you can't go back in time. But you can ask God to restore or bring back those times of lost opportunities, blessings, and increase. God will always give you the grace to do it over again with the understanding that this time, Kairos, you will be victorious. You get to do a, a makeover. You get to do a do-over. Now, granted, I understand that we all made mistakes. We've all said some stupid things. We've all done some stupid things. And we wish we can go back in time. 
by that opportunity you missed. That opportunity you missed can come back again. You may have missed it that time, but this time you get to get it again. Now I'm just going to kind of go and just um, be transparent. Yeah, I grew up in Hollywood. Yeah, I, I was doing actor work and extra work and whatnot. And I went to go pick up my check at Extra Central Casting, and a casting agent saw me. She was a casting agent for LA Law. And she says, I'll, I'll just tell you the truth. Um, I brought my son. He was in his little car seat thing. I just, I just took it into the, to the, uh, the, uh, the office to go pick up my check. So I just happened to have, have, happened to have him in my hand. So she goes, oh, what a cute baby. She goes, oh, he goes, yeah, go in, he's cute, he's a little fussy, I don't want to leave in the car, can't pick up my check. And she goes, oh, okay, so are you Central or Cynics? I go, Cynics, which is not needed. She goes, okay, well, I've got some work for you. Um, and it's only because my son, my son brought the opportunity. Are you with me? That was a divine moment of opportunity. Okay? Opportunity. My son was there for this opportunity. The casting director comes out, perfect timing, sees my son, goes, oh, go, go, go and then gives me the opportunity to be on L.A. Law. And she goes, you need to be on set at Paramount Studios at 4.45 in the morning for wardrobe and makeup and all that stuff. And she goes, oh, don't wear black shoes. If it's brown, go, I got some brown boots. Perfect, wear your brown boots. So I came home, and I'm thinking like, oh, and she goes, it's going to be a multi -day, multiple day shoot. I go, oh my God, oh my God. Which means I get to not only get the opportunity to be on L.A. Law, and I'm dating myself, guys. It was, it was, most of you guys are, what's L.A. Law? It was an old show, okay? L.A. Law. I got the opportunity to be a bailiff on L.A. Law, and it was a multiple-day shoot, which means I get to take my vouchers, and I got three vouchers, and God help me to give me a word to say or speak, because then I could join SAG, because I had to, my voice on TV. So I was like, I was like, after. After was at that time. After was separate than SAG. They're the same. They're one company now. But at that time, they were separate. After was more TV. SAG was more movies. So if I got to speak on After, uh, I'm sorry, I not needed that. If I got my voice recorded, that gave me the opportunity to get a foothold to join After. So I'm like, yes, this is my chance now to be an After actor. I came home I'm like, woohoo, Pamela, guess what happened? Woo -hoo. Okay. Here's what happened, y'all. She goes, oh, really? I go, yeah, 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 yeah. I just got to make sure I got my black boots. Now, my wife told me, well, make sure you got your boots and everything ready. I go, yeah, 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 yeah. No, I didn't do that because I was already playing paycheck. I was already thinking like, oh, yeah. oh when the money starts coming in, yeah. I mean, I was like fantasy land like you wouldn't believe. So I, of course, you know, 445 calls, so I get up at 3, thinking like, okay, I'm going to get up, I'm going to get up, I'm going to get up, okay, okay, okay. And of course, I couldn't sleep because I was so excited. So 3.30, I get up, and I got my suit, and she says, okay, no black shoes, let me go build my boots. Okay, where are my boots? Babe? Saw my boots? And she goes, no, you didn't grab them last night? I'm like... No, I just figured they were in the closet. They weren't in the closet. I couldn't find those stupid boots. I could not find those godforsaken, ungodly, unholy boots. You want to talk about a person going ballistic? I like, I gotta find those boots. I gotta find those boots. And then I realized if I don't leave now, I'm not gonna make the 4:45 call time. So I grabbed my brown slippers. They looked like uh, they would have. They would have worked. So I grabbed my brown slippers, and I threw them all the way out to, to uh, Paramount Studios. I got that 450. 450. And there's a red light. You, okay, just, just so you guys know, when you go to the studios, if that red light is pouring like this, that means they're filming, be silent, be quiet, and you can't come in. They're not opening the door for nothing. So at 450, I see the red light flashing. I know I'm five minutes late. Silly me, I knock anyway. Do, 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 do. No one answers the door. No one answers anything. I did get a, I was, uh, I think, um, uh, a phone call saying, uh, where are you? I go, oh, I'm outside. And she goes, oh, you weren't there at 445? I said, nope. I said, click. Click. So I missed that opportunity because I allowed my pride and arrogance about what I'm going to do 
when I make my union card and I get to do union work, I missed an opportunity because I was too prideful to go look for my shoes to have everything ready. I felt I can get up in enough time. And you know, to this day, honey, did we, did we ever find those stupid boots? I don't think we ever did. No, I don't think we ever did. So I, I, was just saying, I, I think we found one. Huh? Well, I think we found one, but I don't think we ever found the other one. Yeah, I, I to this day, I have no idea. I just, it was just one of those things. So I missed that opportunity. That was a Kairos moment, and I missed it. I missed it. So I'm sitting there going, ah. a few years go by. And I'm working on, as an extra on Coming to America with Eddie Murphy in a single home. And I'm sitting there thinking, like, okay, this is interesting. This is interesting, interesting. And one of the guys, Calvin Lockhart, he's an actor back in the 70s. Uh, he did he did The Watermelon Man. I get him. I'm dating myself. Um, what he was, he was a quote unquote well known star in the 70s, 60s and 70s. But then he felt Hollywood was too racist or whatever. So he went to Jamaica and Africa. Did it really big back there, over there, overseas. So by come the 80s and 90s roll around, no one really knew who he was, but they gave him an opportunity to be in Coming to America. But he had a little chip on his shoulder. John Landis, who was the director of Coming to America, said, hey, Calvin, can you come here for a second? And he goes, uh, yes, Masa. He said that in front of everybody, in front of the ADs, the staff, the other extras. And everyone's going, Ooh. So John Landis fired him. He was almost done with his shots. However, they needed, they needed a few perspective shots, basically like from the shoulder and, you know, different angles. All they knew was an angle guy. So out of all those actors that were there, they're saying, we're looking for somebody to sit in as a double for Calvin Lockhart. Uh, so our AG is going to start walking around, the assistant directors, they're going to start walking around, you know, stand up, you know, if you're male, so on high five, da 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 So I'm sitting there. occurred to me. It just occurred to me. Wow. So I like remember talking to you, I walked into there a few years earlier with my son in my hand, picked up my check. There was a guy who worked at Cedex who handed me my check. Cool guy, nice guy. He wanted to be one of those assistant directors. So I'm sitting there on the set with 500 other people sitting there, and he goes, I remember you. Hey, I know you. Hey, come here, come here, come here. And he, it was me and this other guy. We were the ones who were, they were the, the two finalists to be Calvin Lockhart's uh, assistant. But then the AD, who I knew, goes, I know this guy. Let's get him. And I was like, oh, talk about being at the right place at the right time. That AD is still making movies today. But he picked me. Now, I went from making $50 a day to $150 a day. Now, back in the 80s, I was a lot of money. Still a lot of money, but, you know, then I wasn't expecting that. So, here I am. Now, prior to that moment, that Kairos moment, prior to that time, 500 people, the ADs, were, the assistant directors, were told, these people will get crazy, they will get unruly, so you need to establish dominance the first day. So they grabbed bullhorns and started to yell, Sit down, shut up, move, and all these little commands were giving. And they said, be short, be direct. That's what they were told. And he told me they were told this. So they were kind of corralling 500 people. I mean, you got to have a little bit of authority. Let's say there's large people. So when they said these words, I uh, they were saying, I think one point, uh, I think it was like a Monday or Tuesday. They're like, if your your last name is A to H, you get over there for your lunch. Is Z to whatever, L to Z on this side. And so I go, where'd I go for lunch? And I just, I tapped the person. I was polite. Where'd I go for lunch? And she takes the bull, he takes the bullhorn and he goes, I said, he do each on this side. He put that bullhorn right in my face and yelled it. I mean, it was so disrespectful and so mean. I was like, Phew. I sucked it up and I walked into the line. I was appropriate line. I go, he didn't have to yell at me. I'm right there, right? He didn't have to use the bullhorn. I'm right there. Right. Monday and Tuesday, right? That's what happened. Wednesday, Thursday, when I got my little promotion as a stand-in, that same person who yelled at me with the bullhorn is now dressing me. 
this person is putting on my jacket that, that Calvin Lockhart was wearing. For the, and we saw the movie, the, uh, Coming to America, the beginning of the movie, before Eddie Murphy is getting married, there's a guy who says, Your Highness, I present to you my daughter, Lottie. I was that guy's double. That's Calvin Lockhart. I was his double. So here I am in this little, you know, military kingly garb from the southern nation, whatever. I'm dressed up like this guy. So I'm not the one who says this, but they show his back. I'm that guy. You see me. I'm, that's me. So anyway, this person is dressing me. And then she's combing my hair. And then he says, can I get you something to drink, Mr. Hardy? Are you thirsty, Mr. Hardy? Are you hungry, Mr. Hardy? And I'm like, no, no. Wait, 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 wait. wait. I'm sorry. Just yesterday, you were yelling at me in my face. And so now you're dressing me? I, I, it's hard for me to... I mean, it's like too fast. And then she starts laughing. And she says, I know that happens in this business. And she says, this is what we're taught. Do not do not yell at anybody going on your way up. Or, I'm sorry, do not treat people badly on your way up because you're going to see them again on your way down. So one day you may be an actor, a famous actor, and I don't want you to forgive me. So can I get you some water, Mr. Horton? So I was like, that was her way of apologizing. I was like, yes, I think I will get some water. That'll be all. I played into it because I saw her attitude change real quick, and I thought that was that was amazing. So I missed my opportunity on LA Law to get my SAG card or after card. I missed it. I was beating myself up over it, but the opportunity came back to me. Not not the LA Law thing, but here I am on set, and it was a um, a close up shot. So the only people here's the beautiful part about this: the only people in the room was James Earl Jones. You know, James O. Jones, John Amos from Good Times, Thelma Hopkins, Arsenio Hall, uh, 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 Eddie Murphy, John Landis, me, and the girl who was the, the who played the, the bride to be. And I'm sitting there going, amongst this cast, now this is back in the 80s when these guys were mega, 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 ultra, 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 top of the line, da 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 da. And I'm sitting here, all this, and God says, Are you done? Did you get out of your system? And I was like, yeah, this is it. This is it. So when the guy, when the guy took the clock and goes, all right, you know, um, wedding scene, click like, and had the clockers, and I was doing my little scene. I, all I do was stand there, and I held her arm, and I looked over her hand. So when she's, she's turning around, she's looking back at me. They needed somebody to be a perspective. They looked back at me, and it was a beautiful, beautiful moment to be on a Hollywood set with the elite of the elite at that time. And to sit down there and have James Earl Jones say, ah, we found the replacement. Good for you, young man. And I'm like, thank you, man. I mean, sorry, James Earl Jones. You know, it was like one of those touching moments. And I'm like, wow. Ah. And God said, you're done. Now, you remember this? They wanted to call me back. Maybe when Eddie Murphy, if you guys saw the movie, Eddie Murphy played and Arsene Hall, they played a double, couple of different characters within the movie, right? They played the barbers, they played, you know, the old guys, they played um, the, sometimes with women, and they just switched around different roles and characters. So there's one scene where the character was supposed to get his haircut. They wanted me to be, that, I think it was uh, uh, Arsenio's um, replacement, because Arsenio and Eddie, Eddie Murphy are getting haircuts. So they wanted me to be Arsenio's uh, double. And since they used it the first time, they go one to this time. And I said, nah, nah, I didn't do it. You know who they picked to take my place? Cuba Gooding Jr. That's my story, y'all. That's my little story from my little Hollywood. So when I saw that to say, God redeemed my time and made it better. Now, true, I didn't get L.A. Law, but I got something better. So I want you, I want you, I want you to be encouraged today. That you may have thought you missed your opportunity. You may have thought you missed that blessing. But God will bring those times, those times uh, to redeeming those times and times of refreshing back into your life. Back into your life. So you haven't missed anything. Sure, maybe that person, maybe that ministry, maybe that business, maybe that uh, job, maybe that apartment, maybe that it didn't work out. But God is going to redeem those Kairos moments, those moments of divine time. They get to be restored back to you. Now, the Kronos moments, yeah, that's up to God. But that's when the restitution of all things. But those set times, God will make a way where it seems to be no way. 
telling you guys this. I am telling you this. Because we went into this time to go, I missed it. I missed it. Now, now, you don't have to say anything. You don't have to make a comment. But you can if you want to. I'm just going to put it out there. And, and I'm not saying that we're all, you know, yummy treats. But hear me out. Are there some people in your past, whether it be in high school or college, that maybe you had an opportunity to be with and marry, but you didn't? But now that you're now where you are now, you look back and say, oh, thank God I dodged that bullet. I can tell you, my God, again, I'm not saying I'm a yummy treat, but my God. When I see the end of how some people wound up, I'm like, thank you, Jesus. I did not end up with that person because I can see now how things have progressed and it just would not have been pretty. So yes, God is redeeming your time. Get a do-over and you get, get, you get to get those things back. And Jesus said, I have come to give you life and life more abundantly. And I think if I can read that, I think it says in the, um, uh, Um, where's that? Uh, la, 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 la. I'm just gonna get that scripture correctly. Oh yeah, this is John I'm sorry. Oh yeah. So for the passage translation, it says it this way. A thief has only one thing in mind. He wants to steal, slaughter, and destroy. But I have come to give you everything in abundance, more than you can expect. Life in its fullness until you overflow. I'm going to say it again. A thief has only one thing in mind. He wants to steal, slaughter, and destroy. But I have come to give you everything in abundance, more than you expect. Life in its fullest until you overflow. That puts to shame a direct assault and attack against the three sisters of Clotho, Nona, <clears throat> Lachis, Decima, and Morta Atropho. All those three that have been trying to tell you, this is how you're going to live, this is how long you're going to live, this is how you're going to die. Jesus says, no, 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 no. I'm breaking that mindset. I'm breaking that Greek mentality. I'm breaking that lie off of your life. I have come to give you life and life more abundantly to you overflow with it. So that times of refreshing, times of blessing can come to you. And yeah, if we've blown it, if we've made a mistake, we get to redeem those times, those Kairos moments. But you never knew that you could redeem those times. But tonight, today, I want you to be encouraged. We are going to redeem those times that we thought we lost. Redeeming those moments we thought we lost. There's a website my sister hooked me up to. It was something, oh, I forgot the name of it. If I remember the name, I'll put it into the Facebook thing. It was where you have lost money, forgotten money, and you just type in your name. It shows you if somebody has no check from you or something. And so a few years ago, I had bought some stock and, um, at that time, again, I thought it was a blessing, an opportunity to buy it. And then um, it went, went under, like all stocks go up and down, what they do. And I thought I missed an opportunity. So when my sister gave me the website, I typed in my name, and sure enough, it says, oh, Andre Harvey from Soledad Incorporated, you owe a $15, $15 check. I go, for what? Except for the stock. It's not worth much. But I tell you what, when you don't, we're not expecting any money, and you get $15, that's a blessing, y'all. That's a blessing. So... It's those little things that God begins to redeem your times. 
those times you lost. So don't look at it like I missed this opportunity, I missed the boat. He didn't miss the boat. You missed that boat, but another boat's coming around. Your ship is coming around. Not just a little tugboat, your ship is coming around. So please understand what the enemy meant for evil, God is going to reverse it for your good. Peter was trying to plead with these guys. You killed Jesus, okay? You, you nailed him to a cross. But I'm telling you now, repent so your sins may be blotted out. So that when the times of refreshing come from the presence of the Lord, you'll be at the right place at the right time. And then Jesus doesn't come back until the restitution of all things. Which means that the divine set times of blessing, God's going to be able to prop unto you, boom, boom, boom. As you need it, so shall it be there. But he's not coming back until the restitution of all things. So a lot of people are kind of walking around saying, you know, it's the end times, the end times. Who knows? Because the Bible says only God knows the day and hour when he has put that into his own power. So as long as it takes, as long as it takes, he's not, there's no set time for the, for the second coming of Christ. There's no set time. It's when the restitution of all things. How long does that take? Till we get our act together, for the most part. So if it takes another 200 years, then so be it. Are you with me? But while that's going on, there are the set divine times of God for your blessing. And here's why. Here's why, as we close. God will always give you the grace to do it over again with your understanding that this time you will be victorious. So, we read this earlier. When they therefore were come together and asked of him, Lord, wilt thou at this chronos, days, hours, minutes, and seconds, restore again the kingdom of Israel? And he said to them, It is not for you to know the days, hours, minutes, and seconds, which the Father has put in his own power. But look at this. But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost to come upon you, and you shall be witnesses unto me in both Jerusalem, Judea, and in Samaria, and to the uttermost parts of the earth. Right? Did you catch that? Did you catch that? But you shall receive power after the Holy Ghost to come upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me in both Jerusalem, Judea, and Samaria. Now, we talked about this earlier, because for those of you guys who were with us last month. Samaria is that place where the people you don't get along with, they're the people you can't stand. They're the people who are anti-Jesus. Well, that's just anti-Jesus. They're anti uh, uh, Torah. They have their own interpretation of what the scripture is. We all know people like that. They were considered to Jews unclean, Gentiles, filthy dogs. So Jesus was saying to these guys, Oh, you're gonna be, I'm gonna give you power so you can be witness to me, Jerusalem, Judea, and in Samaria, and in the ghettos, and the place where there's Nazis, and the place where there's KKK. Yeah, I'm gonna give you that power. Do you understand now what he was trying to say? He was trying to say, you're gonna be filled with enough power. To affect Jerusalem means the city, Judea means your state, Samaria meant the nation, and the other most parts of the earth, the rest of the world. So each dimension, city, state, nation, and world, as Jesus specifically said, those four regions, those are four different uh, anointing levels. The level of anointing, the Lord, the level of God's grace for your life increases with each time you step out. So as you begin to expand, as you begin to expand city, state, nation, other those parts of the world, for those of you who are here in the beginning, I was talking about how we see people with these little internet ministries, they're trying to reach a global, worldwide, you know, outreach out there, but they did it wrong. The Bible says Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, other those parts of the world, city, state, nation, world. That's the anointing. That's the structure. You just can't go there and go all over the world when your neighbor doesn't even know you're saved. You can't have this global outreach when your next door neighbor doesn't know you're Christian. Are you with me? In these regions of city, state, nation, worldwide ministries or opportunities, whether it be your business, uh, your family, your ministry, your, your entrepreneurship, it, it always starts small. Always start small, but each each level because there are certain tasks that need to be accomplished. You need to get through the the accounting and software issues in, in the city, and then you work on getting national or regional contracts 
expanding your reach. And then when you go nation, then you've got a global outreach to sell your product or your ministry, whatever you're going to do. But then you give it to touch the world, which means you get international connections. It doesn't happen overnight. You're going to begin somewhere. Every successful entrepreneur has a story to tell how they started, how they got started in their garage, how they got started in a little small, you know, little storefront, some little, you know, unknown town somewhere. There's always a beginning. So when you talk about this global outreach, and you think, ha, 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 I have amassed a huge following. If the internet shuts down, so does your outreach. So if you start small and begin to build it up, at which each level, from city, state, nation, worldwide ministry, which each level, there's a certain, a, a certain level of grace that comes upon you, a certain level of God's glory that rests upon you. That doesn't happen overnight. It can give you... Um, and an increased ability to inf effect and affect a lot of people. But it doesn't go from like, uh, I'm in my living room on TV, and tomorrow I get to be on TV, and it doesn't, doesn't equate that way. It doesn't equate that way. There's one reason why one-hit wonders never really last. Can I tell you guys another secret, a little, little story? In L.A., in the Dodger Stadium, there was a guy there, I used to work at a place called Rick's, Rick's Burger, and there was a guy there, he was a guitar player, and um, he was trying to write some songs. And his girlfriend was there, and she says, help us decide what song, what, what name to choose for our band. And so she had this um, idea of having a sword, or a knife rather, and she put a bunch of flowers around it. And I said, well, that looks weird because it looks like the, the, the knife is going to cut the flowers. Why don't you put a gun there? And then, I, I kid you not, she drew a gun and wrapped roses around it. She goes, guns and roses. And they looked at each other. I thought, should we? I don't know. So I wrote a song. And I go, well, how about this? And he, he, tells, he tells me, he says, I like that. And he says, can I have it? I go, sure. And he goes, just so we're, just so we're clear, he pulls out a pen. Right, I surrender this song. I thought that's kind of like legalistic, you know. Just, just have it, dude. Just take it. He goes, no, no, no. I want it to be legit. And so I wrote a song that this guy wrote that this girlfriend was drawing a gun and circled with roses about. And I'm gonna leave it at that. But that's how you talk. You go from small beginnings, small beginnings, to increases. You never know. You never. You know, it's funny. I was watching this meme, a uh, little small video. That was about the movie Breaking. I was an extra in Breaking too, and um, I wasn't in Breaking One, but I love that movie. And they showed the beginning scene where Boogaloo Shrimp, they're at the beach, and him and uh, um, Shabadoo, they're at the beach, and they're pop against pop, pop and taco, and there's a crowd that surrounds them. And I'm thinking, like, is that Jean Claude Van Damme? Jean Claude Van Damme is wearing a tank top. And he's an extra in the movie Breaking. Talk about your small beginnings. So yeah, you never know. You just never know. And God will redeem those times for you. He will make those things happen. You, so please do not think you missed it. You missed the opportunity because they will come back around to you. And God will grant you victory. So we read here when Jesus is saying, it's not for you to know the days, season, hours, and minutes, or seconds. But, 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 you will receive power, and it's going to give you the ability to minister to places you never thought you could dream possible. So don't worry about, is it the end times? Don't worry about, is rapture going to happen? Don't worry about those things, because God is going to redeem those times for you, so you can be successful. As God begins to, I'm sorry, as God begins to bring restitution of all things, that's going to take, that's going to take some chronos, okay? That can happen overnight. This is a beautiful story. <coughs> George Washington faced General Howe from England in 1776. And in a certain battle, both sides knew that the 8,000 American forces were no match for the powerful English brigades that were in the tens of thousands. To ensure his complete and utter victory over the Americans, General Howe decided to delay his attack for two days. Are you with me? George Washington took advantage of the situation and ordered the retreat of, of his troops in the cover of night. They escaped by way of boats and a full moon. 
But the night did not last long, so the sun began to rise. There were still men left in, har in harm's way. And, and just as all doom seemed to be definite, a heavy fog concealed the men as the last of them escaped. So when the English arose to battle, they were surprised to see that there was no one there. Not one of the 8,000 men were harmed. May God grant you the blessing to redeem your time. Imagine being in that place where you go, I got this, I got him. Just tell the king, I got this. And for two days, you're just celebrating your victory you don't even have yet. And in two days, you wake up to go attack and no one's there. You want to talk about God protecting you. You want to talk about God redeeming that time? A full moon for two days? Come on, somebody. God will always make a way where there's going to be no way. Because Christ has given you life and life more abundantly. You have a destiny. You have a purpose. You have an assignment. You can blow it if you want to. But if you blow it, God will bring back the opportunity for you again to complete your assignment. To complete your destiny because God knew exactly what you're going to do he wrote every single day of your life before you even live one day sure we make mistakes yeah we blow it we say some stupid stuff we do some stupid stuff but God always makes a way so we get to redeem those times where we miss those blessings Man, let's pray Father, we thank you, Lord God. We thank you, Lord God, for even giving us the ability to redeem the times. So, Father, I'm asking for my brothers and my sisters, would you now release times of refreshing, the recovery of breath, the recovery of breath, to where they can breathe again, be revived again, be restored again. And those set Kahiros moments, in those, in those set divine times, may the blessings of the Lord overwhelm them and just overtake them and knock them down. Heal them and overwhelm them with your love, your provision, your grace, your mercy, and your power. Bless them to overflow, Lord. And Father, whenever the enemy meant for evil, we do away with those strengths. And we fully trust and commit ourselves to knowing that you are faithful and that you're able to do exceedingly abundantly about all that we can ever ask or imagine. So we're able to fulfill our ministries, yea, even our destinies in Jerusalem, Judea, Samaria, Samaria, and the uttermost parts of the world. So, Father, I speak blessings upon my brothers and my sisters. Would you bless them, Father? And for those watching in the future on YouTube, Father, would you bless them, Lord? So they can also enter in times of refreshing, times of refreshing like never before. In Jesus' name. Amen. Any questions or comments? Thank you, Lord. I hope that you guys got a little bit more understanding about what that means and the difference between Kairos and Kronos and how Jesus, every time, by the way, every time Jesus spoke, it was either combating a lie or some Greek or Latin Roman, uh, sorry, Greco Roman God that was trying to invade the people. Amen. Amen. And I'm setting the stage up for an end times. Um, teaching because I got a lot of people that are getting it's getting crazy out there so we're gonna send a little you know a little bit of reality back into the fold because it's not gonna happen like you think it's not gonna appear like you think but it would be better and it'll be even greater than you can imagine but not like we thought um oh uh not at this time jury a little bit later uh, okay, okay. 
So that being said, look back at those times where you maybe have felt you blew it, you lost it, and just ask the Lord to redeem those times, okay? I promise you he will. He will. He will. It is his desire to see that you are blessed more than you want to be and greater than you can ever imagine. So that being said, guys, know that I love you guys and may God grant you the blessing to redeem your time. That being said, who's going to be the first millionaire? Pamela. <laughs> Hi, yeah. Everybody. Amen. Amen. So I love you guys. Go Raiders. We'll see you on Wednesday. Go Raiders. Thank you. Welcome. Love you, everybody. Hello. Bye. Have a nice weekend. Hello.